Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. In Sevier County in Arkansas, it was a place that the road was blocked off by the police by a barrier because the high school kids were going out there to party. It was about halfway between De Queen and De Queen Lake. Let me start by saying that I hesitate to tell my story, but I need to. When I moved to De Queen, I was told about a story of a wild man that some of the locals called the thing. It's described as big, hairy, wild man. A girl that I knew swore that while parked out in the country, it came up behind her car and bounced it up and down by putting two hands on the trunk. She was terrified. About two miles from where she said that happened, I had an experience myself. It was very isolated and in an area of deep woods prior to warehouse coming in and clear-cutting a lot of the forest. Some logging had been done, and some of the pine trees were growing back and were 8 to 10 feet tall. My friend and I were about 18 years old and went out to this place, which was on an old logging road that went out into the woods about a half a mile and just had a turnaround spot. It was a very rough road that you had to go slowly down, especially in my car. I would typically drive with my foot on the brake to get in there. Me and my friend went out there to talk because his girlfriend was pregnant and he didn't know what to do. There was a full moon that night. I got out and went to the back of the car to urinate. That's when I heard the footsteps. Something was walking through the woods, obviously on two legs. The noise of the steps was weird because I could hear each step so loud. I remember thinking, that is a two-legged something going step, step, step. I seemed to be quite a ways away from the sounds I heard, like maybe 60 yards. But as it approached, the heavy footfalls became obvious that it was not a deer. It was walking on two legs. Then I saw it moving through the trees. It was like a huge man. It stopped about 20 yards from me and looked at me over the top of the pine tree. I could see the big black eyes shining in the moonlight and the head. It was a large head and I didn't stay for long. I had a primal fight or flight experience and a dose of adrenaline that I didn't know was possible. It scared me so bad I didn't even get my pants zipped up before I jumped in my car, started it and floored it. I nearly drug my oil pan off going out on this road at about 35 miles per hour. My friend thought I had lost my mind. When I hit the paved road, my car spun halfway around. I regained control and floored it. I couldn't even tell him until we were a few miles down the road. I went back the next day with my older brother with guns and a tape measure and showed him the spot. The tree where I saw this thing were nine and ten feet tall. His head was just over the top of the trees, and the lower face was at the top. I never went back there at night again, and I didn't talk about it for a long time. I know in my heart that it was a Bigfoot. I know without a doubt that I heard him, saw him through the pines, walking for about ten seconds, and then he stopped and stared at me. I could see the shape easily because it was a full moon. He was like a big man walking behind those trees. I remember seeing the arms swinging and the two legs moving. There was no smell and the eyes didn't glow red, just black, shiny eyeballs. Big eyes, too. I never went back after. My brother and I went back the next day. There were several local stories of the wild man out there. Many people said there was an old hippie that lived in the woods. No one ever called it Bigfoot, just a wild man. It was 10 p.m. and it was a full moon. On to the next one. 
in Franklin County in Arkansas one night. Samantha and her boyfriend were driving on deserted State Road 219 when they spotted a strange creature standing on the side of the road. They described it as about four and a half feet tall with glowing red eyes. They kept driving and did not stop. On to the next one. In Hot Springs County in Arkansas, near Bismarck, near Confidential Road, several friends and myself had gone together to purchase 120 acres of cut over forest land that was totally surrounded by several thousand acres of timber company land. This land was at the end of a small valley and at the far end of a dead end road. On my portion of the land was a small rise in the northern half of the valley and I was building a shack to be used for hunting and camping. One night at about 8 p.m., while working inside by lantern light, I decided to step outside on the deck for a cigarette. As soon as I lit my lighter, a roaring, crackling scream commenced from the slope of the ridge to the south about 300 yards away, but in direct line of sight. I was too startled to do anything but stay rooted to the spot and feel the hair stand on the back of my neck, something which hasn't happened to me in years. While the scream lasted only a couple of seconds, it seemed to go on much longer. Since it was very cloudy and dark, I ran inside for a flashlight, all the while wishing I had brought my rifle inside from the truck. With a flashlight and a hatchet, I headed for the truck, only to find that the truck itself seemed to be moving. In the bed of the truck, I found my German Shepherd. I had forgotten all about him curled in a tight ball in the corner and shaking so hard he was moving the whole truck. We left immediately. Several nights later, one of the friends who had laughed at me when I told the story came out to see how I was progressing with the shack. He laughed some more at the extra lantern I had placed inside and outside, and at the pistol and shotgun I had laying on the table. We stepped out onto the lit deck and almost immediately, the same grating scream came from the exact same spot on the south ridge. In a flash, my friend was standing back to back with me as we stared out into the dark. Since the dog was not with us, and because we were armed and had good flashlight, we stayed there for two more hours, but heard nothing else. I was certainly glad to have a witness this time. Several weeks later, my friend and I ran into the other property owners and were relating the story to him when I noticed him become a bit pale. He finally told us that he had been burning piles of deadfall on his part of the property that butt into the South Ridge and was walking back and forth to the stream to get water to put out the several fires when he heard something walking around him in the woods. It was too dark to see, but... He at first assumed it was a deer or maybe a bear. After he had listened for a while, he decided it sounded like a two-legged creature and believed it was one of us trying to play a joke on him. So he continued putting out his fires while listening to whatever it was make a circle around him. But when it got upwind from him, he began to smell a terrible odor that he admitted scared him so bad that he got in his truck and left, ignoring his still smoldering fires. I cannot say what it was that we heard or what the other man smelled, but I have heard several kinds of big cats, bears, howler monkeys, and other large animals in my years hunting and in the army. And I have never heard anything that sounded remotely like what heard those two nights. As I said, one of the property owners also smelled something horrible one night and believed it was circling him. Sometime later, we found an indistinguishable part of a footprint on the banks of the pond. When we brought the dog over to smell it, he ran back to the truck and jumped up in the bed. He would not come out until I had moved the truck on up to the shack. Another one of the landowners told me that he had talked to a logger who was operating logging equipment on some nearby land. 
the logger said he saw a big black monkey thing up in a tree. Both times were 8 p.m. It was very cloudy and so very dark. The weather was chilly, but not cold. The area was rocky ridges, scrub hardwood, and pines. There is a creek nearby. On to the next one. At Nenga in County Tripoli in Ireland, one night in June in 1850, a farmer returning home from a fair was approaching a bridge over a dried up stream when he saw a white object about the size of his hat moving along the road at his side. The horse refused to cross the bridge. He whipped the horse on, and as they crossed the bridge, he encountered a tall, shadowy figure, like a woman in black, which struck him on the shoulder, pushing forward and causing the horse to bolt. When he got home, his family found that he had the shape of a hand imprinted on his back. The man died before the year ended. On to the next one. In the vicinity of the Bay of Kinsale near Old Kinsale Head in County Cork in Ireland, during late August of 1850, there were several sightings of an enormous sea serpent. Shortly before the 27th of August, 1850, a party of four gentlemen in a yacht near the Barrel Rocks saw something rubbing itself on the beacon installed there. The visible part of the creature was 30 feet long and standing like a mass six feet in diameter and rubbing itself against the beacon. The eyes were enormous, being nine inches across on the eyeball and the upper part of the back appeared to be covered with a furrowed shell-like substance. One of the party fired a rifle at it and the creature shot into the air as if driven by pain before plunging under the waves. On investigating the beacon, the party found numerous sections of scaly mass adhering to parts of it and assumed that the creature was changing its skin. On to the next one. At hospital, a town in County Limerick, Ireland one night in 1850, a man was traveling in his horse-drawn sidecar from hospital to Ballynaddy on a clear moonlit night, sitting facing the back while his servant sat facing the front. The servant suddenly grabbed him as the vehicle came to a halt, surrounded by tiny shadowy figures that were trying to grab the driver from his seat while the horse was shivering with fear. The passenger grabbed the reins and urged the horse on. The driver felt the touch of the creatures was so cold that it numbed him. On to the next one. At Dunbo in Londonderry, Ireland, at 6.30 a.m. on January 4th, 1851. On Saturday morning, the 14th, we are informed by a correspondent that a very singular and startling atmospheric phenomenon was witnessed by several individuals in the parish of Dunbo. About half past six o'clock a.m., it appears a very unusual brightness was observed above the eastern horizon, in which it was distinctly observed to pass two large vessels of the line. The circumstance having been noticed by the family of a most respectable farmer of the above parish, general attention was drawn to the most wonderful phenomenon. After a short period, the vessels disappeared, and the eastern hemispheres became preoccupied by a grand panorama representation of two armies approaching in warlike conflict. On drawing near to each other, they were seen to issue from opposing ranks two officers who appeared to engage in single combat, and so distinctly visible was the representation that their actual maneuvers could be distinguished. This singular representation continued from half past six to eight o'clock. The parties who witnessed the above phenomenon have expressed their willingness to authenticate it in most satisfactory manner. 
on to the next one. One afternoon in summer of 1853 in County Donegal, Ireland, 73-year-old Neil Colton claimed that as a youth, he had a rather strange and frightening fairy encounter indeed. Colton claimed that one summer day, he had been put with his brother and cousin gathering berries out in the countryside when they heard some inexplicable ethereal music wafting through the air from beyond some nearby rocks. When the group went to investigate, they claimed that they had come across a band of fairies dancing in a clearing, and one of these little folk, a woman dressed in red, suddenly noticed they were being watched and rushed forward with decidedly aggressive intent. The mysterious woman is claimed to have surged forth with a stick or rush in her hand to strike the cousin across the cheek, after which she rushed out to grab Colton's brother's arm to keep from falling. They sent the group scurrying away in a panic, and at some point, on their flight back to their home, Colton's cousin collapsed to the ground, seemingly dead. The girl's father and a priest by the name of Father Ryan then came to the scene and Ryan said a prayer over the body, after which she slowly and groggily awoke. The priest would come to the conclusion that it had only been her grabbing Colton's brother that had kept her from being taken by the fairies forever. On to the next one. near Askeaton County in Limerick, Ireland, in October of 1855, a marvelous story. We have been informed by what exact amount of credibility we should give to the statement we are not prepared to say that in the progression of the formation of the Boyness Railway, some laborers discovered at a small distance beneath the surface of the earth within about two miles of Askeaton a gigantic skeleton 11 feet in length. Beside the remains was found a vessel, which an inscription on it indicated that something would be found by digging deeper. Following this intimation, they uncovered something resembling a bottle inscribed with a legend which directed the three drops of its contents should be poured into the mouth of the skeleton, whereupon its owner would come to life again. Although much doubting, they followed the instructions, but on letting the second drop into the mouth, the skeleton began to stir, upon which the men became so frightened that they took flight, expecting, as they ran, to be persuaded by the half-resurrected giant. The report of this strange story caused such sensation in the neighborhood that police had to close up the grave, and thus the old giant has been once more consigned to his long slumber of many ages. On to the next one. On the 2nd of August, 1865, a thunderstone fell from the sky on to Cashel, Trippery, Ireland. This triangular stone was black and marked by straight lines as perfect as if they were made by a ruler. The stone was in the shape of a rounded-edged pyramid. The stone's origin is unknown, though there were enough witnesses to attest that it made its initial appearance from the sky. On to the next one. In Dublin, Ireland, on the 9th of May, 1867, Several policemen and bystanders were puzzled by a fall of strange nuts or berries that fell, hitting the witnesses, including police, during a storm. There were strange nuts or berries and were of an unknown type, about half an inch across and dark brown and spherical like hazelnuts. They had a slightly aromatic odor and seemed fossilized and fell with great force. On to the next one. I hope you enjoyed those encounters. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell. 
and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!